What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a video on cards you absolutely need going into the 2019-2020 competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! season. Now this is a video for maybe a new or returning player who's been out of the loop and doesn't know which cards they should pick up if they plan on playing in any major events, or maybe the experienced player who's looking to invest in some nice options just to know that they are going to be well prepared once the regional season does kick back up. Because the thing is, we are in the off season and there's plenty of amazing deals out there because cards are very cheap and once the tournaments start kicking up again and people start figuring out what the best decks may be you might be surprised how fast prices can change and you definitely want to get in early and not miss out on those incredible deals so without further ado let's go ahead and get right into it kicking things off i'm going to start with a group of cards that really should come as no surprise Hand traps. Hand traps are going to be universally applicable regardless of the format. These are basically like the eternal safe picks that you definitely should get your hands on. And the thing is when it comes to hand traps, they are cheaper now than they have ever been throughout the course of time. They're going to get even cheaper once Dual Devastator comes out and you're going to be able to acquire a majority of them all in a single product. But at that point, you can just buy the singles for an even cheaper price. However, Dual Devastator doesn't come out until I believe October and there's plenty of YCS's regionals and different events coming up and the thing is the hand traps are at a low enough price that you should definitely just pick them up anyway I mean if you want those altar arts that's fine but again you can just get those later on ash blossom is a common out of a structure deck and is so affordable now compared to look at last year when it was still like 30 to 40 bucks a copy because I think it had what like one reprint out of like legendary collection Kaiba maybe at most so ash blossom has definitely come a long way another card you're definitely going to pick up is ghost ogre ghost ogre again it kind of dips in and out of formats, but it's a card that is very powerful when it is applicable, and you definitely want to have your play set of those. Effect Veiler is another big one. Effect Veiler is seeing tons of play right now because it's not once per turn, just stopping effects of very incredible cards, and it can't be chain blocked, which is very important too. Veiler is just a very solid pick. Infinite Impermanence is nice. This is more of a pricier option. However, getting your hands on this would be very useful just because of the fact it can't be stopped by a card like Called by the Grave, which you should also have a play set of by now too, just because Called by the Grave is the ultimate hand trap destroyer, so if you're playing any sort of combo deck or you need to make sure you're not going to lose to hand traps, definitely make sure you get your set of Called by the Grave. Beyond that though, there are still a few more, I would say, niche hand traps you might want to pick up. For instance, something like Artifact Lancia. These are common, so these are probably pennies, although if you want to upgrade for the secret rares that came out of Battles of Legend, be my guess, this is probably one of the best hand traps of the uh, side deck, going up against specific strategies like Orcus, Danger Thunder Dragon, anything that takes advantage of banishing. Lancy is always going to be useful, but another good pick is Psyframe Gear Gamma. With the inclusion of a Link monster we're going to be discussing a little bit later on, Gamma is actually kind of revered as one of the strongest hand traps in the game. And that's not due to the Link monster, that's just a blanket fact, because Gamma not only negates the effect of a monster, but also destroys the monster as well. And yeah, you can't control any monsters, and you do have to play that pesky Psyframe Driver in your main deck, however, Gamma can sometimes just end turns in ways that no other hand trap does. And again, it's one of those hand traps you should just have a playset of and have them in your binder so that when you do find a situation where you find Gamma to be very powerful, you have it and you don't have to worry about picking them up when the price of them could potentially skyrocket. Next up, I want to recommend a couple of versatile engines that you can pick up that may not apply to one particular deck, but actually a wide variety of decks. And it's nice because they're going to be reprinted soon in the Megatons, so that way they're going to become even more affordable affordable and much easier for you to pick up. So the first is the Sky Striker engine. Sky Striker Mobilize Engage is still at three. And the thing is, some people are fearing this card might get hit on a future ban list, but we're not getting another ban list until October. Do you know how many tournaments are taking place between now and then? So you're definitely going to get your runtime out of these copies of Engage. And again, not to mention it's getting reprinted in the Megatins, which means the price is going to be much more affordable than it is now. Although Engage is still relatively cheap, especially again, when you compare it to last Last year, last year when Engage was cheap and people realized that Sky Striker was still the threat that it was, it shot up 50% and people who missed out really missed out. So again, you can use this in so many different decks. You can use it in your Sky Striker deck, but just having Hornet Drones as essentially a one card link too, thanks to a card like Kagari, you can use it in Orcus. Like there's just so many different versatile ways that Engage can be used. I would definitely recommend picking up a playset plus your copy of Hornet Drones and maybe one of each of the Sky Striker spell cards as well, like Afterburner 
or jamming wave, maybe even some widow anchors to again, just have that flexibility in playing a really cool engine that has a lot of toolbox power. You also have an engine like the danger engine. And again, these cards are most likely getting reprinted in the mega tin. So you're going to be able to capitalize on the fact that this is one of the strongest engines in the game cards like Nessie, Jackalope, Suchinoko, being able to just get a monster on the board and just draw more cards deeper into your deck. They're a bit expensive right now, but if you want to get them, I would highly recommend it. However, it does depend on the type of deck that you're playing. For the most part though, if you're not competing in a tournament between now and when the mega tins are released, definitely pick up a playset when the mega tins come out. Don't buy the mega tins, definitely get the singles because you're going to get a much better deal that way. But the dangers are just so good in so many different strategies, helping you dig for cards that you want, get monsters on the board and help just link climb with absolute ease. Now, next up, I want to mention some powerful generic link monsters that you definitely should have on hand. And yeah, I could recommend some Xyz monsters or some synchros as well, but we're in Master Rule 4. Link monsters are the name of the game, and you're probably going to want to get your hands on those before you get any specifics, because you can use these link monsters in such a wide variety of different decks. First and foremost, get yourself a Borosaur Dragon. If you don't already have one of these, definitely pick one of these up. I know it's a little bit pricey. The thing is, though, Borosaur Dragon, there's really no other card like it. Just being able to just link up into a link four and kill your opponent almost instantaneously. This is a win condition that pretty much every single deck in the game can incorporate, and you're going to win so many more games just by having this card in your extra deck. You're going to be very surprised and very glad that you have it. I believe this card might be receiving another reprint in the future, so definitely check to see if it is and see if you plan on attending any major tournaments between now and then, because it's going to get a reprint. I definitely wait, but honestly, it's a fraction of the price as it once was before it got the reprint out of Battles of Legend, and it's going to be a very solid pickup. Next up is the Nightmares. I mean, the Nightmares are still some of the most powerful cards in the game. I mean, Nightmare Goblin is still banned, if that tells you anything, but you've got stuff like Nightmare Phoenix and Cerberus. They're so generic, and the fact that they pop special summon monsters or spell and trap cards is just a very good thing. Not to mention they can draw you cards if they're co-linked. Some of the strongest linked monsters ever created in this game. Even picking up a copy of Griffin isn't too bad, although Griffin is seldom used. When it comes to Griffin, there are some interactions where you can be able to send cards directly from your deck with other cards and then reset them to the field with Griffin, particularly a Floodgate or a card that's probably going to win you the game going into games two or three. So Griffin's just a nice pickup to have. It's also relatively cheap, so it doesn't hurt to have on hand. Another really good card is Saryuja Skull Dread. Saryuja, again, I think is getting another reprint, I believe in Dual Devastator, but Saryuja is one of the best generic Link 4s in the game. Being able to draw you four cards, putting three back on the bottom, just re-sculpting your hand. You could special summon cards with it. 2800 attack. It's one of the strongest Link 4s we've ever had in the game. And speaking of really strong Link 4s, I'd also highly recommend the brand new Appalooza, Bow of the Goddess. This card, if we're in a monster effect heavy format, this card is going to be absolutely king, or I guess queen, because the fact that she can negate four effects potentially in a single turn, even though it is once per chain, it's not a once per turn effect. And that is absolutely absurd in a format that is just gonna be comprised of monster effects running rampant. So even though this is more of a pricey card, you're definitely gonna to wanna to have your hands on it if this card becomes popular, because if people start playing it or find a way to abuse it, she's going to become even more expensive as time progresses. And then the last one I wanted to discuss is uh, Cyframe Lord Lambda. I alluded to this earlier when I talked about Cyframe Gear Gamma, and Lambda is just a very nice generic link too, although you can't make it with tokens, but regardless, the thing is the fact that you can use your Gamma even if you control monsters in your main monster zone gives you just another layer of negation that your opponent has to play through when you assemble your turn one opening boards, and the fact that it can just get you more copies of Gamma is insane. Definitely a nice solid pick up and something you're going to want to have. Another set of cards I want to quickly recommend are spell and trap removal in the form of spell and trap cards. What do I mean by this? Well, make sure you have your copies of Twin Twister, Cosmic Cyclone, Mystical Space Typhoon, uh, Regular Typhoon is even a good one, Heavy Storm Duster. All of these are going to be beneficial to you, whether it's in the main or the side deck. And the reason for that is because Mystic Mine is still a card and you're definitely going to want to have ways to out it depending on the type of deck that you're playing. Hell, you can pick up a few copies of Mystic Mine while you're at 
at it because this is a card that can completely shut down combo decks if they have no way to stop its activation and that could just win you the game outright. But moving on, I want to discuss with you guys some side deck staples because the side deck is just as important as the main or extra deck because you play more games with your side deck than without. So you want to make sure you're properly equipped. First and foremost, if for some reason you don't have Dino Wrestler Panker Tops, get yourself a playset. Like, I don't know what you're doing that you don't have this card already, but this is one of the best, if not the single best side deck card ever created. It just does everything you could ever want. The only downside is it just kind of sucks going first. So when you know you're going second, you could side deck this in. 2600 attack. It's a level seven. It can attack over things that are really large. It's a free special summon. It can pop cards. This card literally does it all. And because it's a common, it is super cheap. But if you want to splurge on the secret rares out of Battles of Legend, I wouldn't really fret you for that. Now we also have a card like Evenly Match. Evenly Match has had several printings now and is one of the biggest blowout cards you could possibly have going second against decks that don't really have a way to negate spell or traps or a deck that plays a ton of back row because Evenly Match can literally just level the playing field. We've seen this time and time again with different back row strategies like Altergeist or Paleozoic or Draco even. Evenly Match is just their worst nightmare and if you just happen to draw it and they don't have a way to negate it, you might have just won yourself the game. Another nice set of cards is anything like Kaijus or Wing Dragon of Raw Sphere Mode. We're going into a possible combo heavy deck format with decks like Danger Thunder Dragon and Pendulum Running Rampant. And the thing is you're going to want to have ways to get rid of those effect negators that basically your opponent can't stop. And the Kaijus and preferably Wing Dragon of Raw Sphere Mode might be the better way of going about that just because you don't have to waste other resources in your hand. You can just tribute three of their monsters for Sphere Mode or just a single one for a Kaiju depending on what kind of deck you're playing. And then you're pretty much free to go off and do whatever you want just because you had these cards in your side deck. And then last but not least, I have to talk about probably one of the most powerful cards ever in this game's history, Super Polymerization. While it is a little bit depending on what deck you're going up against, Super Polymerization cannot be responded to, so I have to mention it. This card is probably a little bit pricey for some people, but it is absolutely worth it because when this card resolves, it's always going to, it's most likely going to win you the game. So guys, that's going to wrap up this video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about any other recommendations you may have for the competitive 2019-2020 Yu-Gi-Oh! season, I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always, subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member, because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.